The King James 1611 AV Bible. Versus. Contemporary English version. By Dr. Stiley William Hayward. The contemporary English version CEV was first published in 1995. The CEV New Testament was released in 1991. The 175th anniversary of ABS. The CEV Old Testament was released in 1995 and the apocryphal slash deuterocanonical books were published in 1999. The CEV began as a result of studies conducted by biblical scholar Dr. Barclay M. Newman in 1984 into speech patterns used in books, magazines, newspapers, and television. These studies focused on how English was read and heard, especially by children. This led to a series of test volumes being published in the late 1980s and early 1990s. The translators of the CEV followed three principles that the CEV must be understood by people without stumbling in. Speech must be understood by those with little or no comprehension of Bible language. Must be understood by all. A new approach to Bible translation. The drafting, reviewing, editing, revising, and refining the text of the contemporary English version has been a worldwide process extending over a period of slightly more than 10 years. It has involved a wide variety of persons beyond the core team of ABS translators and the consultant experts who have worked closely with the team. The creative process has also involved scholar consultants and reviewers representing a wide range of church traditions. And with expertise in such areas as Old Testament, New Testament, Hebrew language, Greek language, English language, linguistics, and poetry. In all, this process involved more than a hundred people in the various stages of the text. Creation and review process. And it is this process, carried out in constant prayer for the guidance of the Spirit of God, that guarantees the accuracy, integrity, and trustworthiness of the CEV Bible from creating and crafting the Contemporary English Version, A New Approach to Bible Translation New York, American Bible Society, 1996 From https colon slash slash cev dot bible slash about Contemporary English Version, 2nd Edition, CEV Registered Copyright 2006 American Bible Society All Rights Reserved Bible text from the Contemporary English Version 2 ND Edition, CEV Registered, is not to be reproduced in copies or otherwise by any means except as permitted in writing by American Bible Society, 101 North Independence Mall East, Floor 8, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania 19106215, www.americanbible.org. The dot .bible registry is operated by American Bible Society, 101 North Independence Mall East FL8, Philadelphia, PA 19106215 USA, phone, plus 12153090900. American Bible Society is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. All donations are tax deductible in full or in part. Licensing American Bible Society is pleased to offer licensing rights to the contemporary English version. A complete and accurate Bible translation for grade school students. The following Bible translations have copyrights managed by American Bible Society. Contemporary English Version CEV Good News Translation, GNT, formerly today's English Version, TEV Reina Valera 1960, RVR 60, Spanish Translation Summary of Fair Use Policy, All Conditions Must Apply No more than 500 verses in total may be reproduced without Permission Scripture slash verses may not make up more than 25% of the new work Verses quoted do not amount to 50% of a Complete Book of the Bible All scripture must be properly cited with the appropriate copyright notice, see below The 
Book or product must be available for non-commercial use. The King James 1611 AV Bible reads, 2 Samuel 21 verse 19, And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan the son of Jerorajim, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Contemporary English Version There was still another battle with the Philistines at Gob. A soldier named Elhanan killed Goliath footnote A from Gath. Whose spear shaft was like a weaver's beam. Footnote B. Elhanan's father was Yari. Footnote C. From Bethlehem. Footnote A. 21.19 Goliath. According to 1 Chronicles 20.5, Elhanan killed the brother of Goliath. The King James Version says Goliath's brother, but the CEV says Goliath. Elhanan, not David, killed Goliath in the CEV. You can't have two false statements in a row, one of the Bibles has to be false. The Contemporary English Version The King James 1611 AV Bible reads, John 8 verse 47, He that is of God heareth God's words, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Contemporary English Version Anyone who belongs to God will listen to his message. But you refuse to listen. Because you don't belong to God. It is the words, not the message, that are important. Jesus is referred to be the Word in both John 1 and 1 John 5. He is the Word, rather than the message. The King James 1611 AV Bible reads, 1 John 5 verse 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Contemporary English Version, in fact, there are three who tell about it. The CEV omits a verse that is preserved in the KJV. Quote, Record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, end of quote the CEV omits. Is there a Bible that doesn't include the Father? The King James 1611 AV Bible reads, Mark 7 verse 16 If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Contemporary English Version Footnote A, 7.15, 16 unclean. Some manuscripts add, if you have ears, pay attention. Other than that the verse is missing. The CEV attempts to make Bible reading as simple as watching television or reading the newspaper. And an entire verse is omitted here. I can assume the CEV and their readers do not have ears to hear. The Sound of Silence The King James 1611 AV Bible reads, Colossians 4 verse 15, Salute the brethren which are in Laodicea and Nymphas, and the church which is in his house. Contemporary English version reads, Colossians 4 verse 15, Give my greetings to the followers at Laodicea, especially to Nympha and the church that meets in her home. So one Bible says, his house and the other says, her home. One Bible, CEV, seems to going with today's culture of transgendering. Oh, as always, the King James is correct. If you want to believe the God rejecting Westcott and Hort, you already sinned. See my Bible study series. The King James 1611 AV Bible reads, Matthew 16 verse 18, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Contemporary English version reads, Matthew 16 verse 18. So I will call you Peter, which means a rock. On this rock I will build my church, and death itself will not have any power over it. The concept of the Jehovah's Witnesses is that there is no hell, only the grave. Death is not the same as hell. 
and hell is not the same as death. Many Christians died, yet they did not go to hell. So no one in church tasted death? CEV favors the JWs. The King James 1611 AV Bible reads, Isaiah 7 verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Contemporary English Version Bible reads, Isaiah 7 verse 14. But the Lord will still give you proof. A virgin. Dot footnote A is pregnant, she will have a son and will name him Emmanuel. Dot footnote B. Footnote. A. 7.14 virgin, or young woman. In this context the difficult Hebrew word did not imply a virgin birth. However, in the Greek translation made about 200 BC and used by the early Christians, the word Parthenos had a double meaning. While the translator took it to mean young woman, Matthew understood it to mean virgin and quoted the passage, Matthew 1. Point 23 because it was the appropriate description of Mary, the mother of Jesus. In a pig's ear, many modern Bibles substitute the words young woman or maiden for virgin. Teen pregnancies are a term used to describe these events in some cases. The fact that a virgin gave birth is a miracle in itself. It's essential to believe. With a footnote, CEV refutes this. The King James 1611 AV Bible reads, John 11:35. Jesus wept. Contemporary English Version Bible reads, John 11:35. Jesus started crying. I do believe the KJV is the simplest. CEV added a word, started, and changed another, wept, to crying. When John wrote his gospel, it was after the fact, wept, past tense. Started crying. Did Jesus ever stop? The King James 1611 AV Bible reads Jonah 2 verse 2. And said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me, out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Contemporary English Version Bible reads Jonah 2 verse 2. When I was in trouble, Lord, I prayed to you. And you listened to me. From deep in the world of the dead, I begged for your help, and you answered my prayer. Hell, according to the CEV, is the world, deep within the world. As the Jehovah's Witnesses do, cancelling out hell. Grave error if you tamper with Jonah's death, burial, and resurrection, you're tampering with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. If there was no hell, Jonah was not in the world but a whale. The King James 1611 AV Bible reads, Matthew 12 verse 40, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whales, belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Genesis 1 verse 21. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly. After their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Contemporary English Version Bible reads, Matthew 12 verse 40. He was in the stomach of a big fish for three days and nights, just as the Son of Man will be deep in the earth for three days and nights. Genesis 1 verse 21. So God made the giant sea monsters and all the living creatures that swim in the ocean. He also made every kind of bird. God looked at what he had done, and it was good. Is it possible that the CEV has no idea what a whale is? Whales, not sea monsters, are reported in newspapers and on television. Save the sea monsters. The King James 1611 AV Bible reads, Genesis 5 colon 1-2. This is the book of the generations of Adam. 
In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him, male and female created he them, and blessed them, and called their name Adam, in the day when they were created. Contemporary English Version Bible reads, Genesis 5:1-2. God created men and women to be like himself. He gave them his blessing and called them human beings. This is a list of the descendants of Adam. The first man. Examine the verses. The CEV is a lot shorter. As a result, it's a lot easier to read. There is no this is the book of Adam's generations, which undermines the Matthew 1 cross-reference. They are referred to as Adam in the KJV, and as human beings in the CEV. Mr. and Mrs. Human Being When was the last time you encountered them? Mr. and Mrs. Adam, according to the King James Version. The King James 1611 AV Bible reads Revelation 12 verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Contemporary English version reads Revelation 12 verse 9. And were thrown down to the earth. Yes. That old snake and his angels were thrown out of heaven. That snake, who fools everyone on earth, is known as the devil and Satan. Quote, while both are considered nouns, the distinction between serpent and snake is that the former is a snake, while the latter is a legless reptile belonging to the suborder serpents with a long, thin body and a fork-shaped mouth. The distinction between viper and serpent as nouns is that a viper is a poisonous snake belonging to the family viperity, whereas a serpent is just a snake. Dragons are defined as the biggest of serpents, allegorically, they are similar to the devil who is frequently depicted as a monstrous serpent in literature and art, 194. Vipers The sort of snake that has received the greatest attention, are portrayed in a similar manner as evil and crafty. And they are particularly connected with adultery, end of quote. By James Bruce Which statement is stronger? The people were deceived, or the people were fooled? Deceived the whole world, KJV. Fools everyone, C-E-V, he did not fool Jesus Christ. The words great dragon is removed, China believes in dragons. Devil is devil, small d, KJV said called not known. You can be falsely known but truly called. The King James 1611 AV Bible reads, Genesis 3 colon 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The contemporary English version reads, Genesis 3 colon 1. The snake was sneakier than any of the other wild animals that the Lord God had made. One day it came to the woman and asked, Did God tell you not to eat fruit from any tree in the garden? Look at the two verses. They are not the same. Subtle, KJV, is more serious than sneakier, CEV. Beasts, KJV, and wild animals, CEV, cows are not wild. Lord, KJV, capitalized, Lord, CEV, not capitalized. One day, CEV, what if it was night, darkness, evil? The KJV mentions no fruit. Fruit is present in the CEV. But nuts grow on trees as well, and nuts are not fruit. Every tree, KJV, any tree, CEV. Yeah, hath God said. The famous phrase, is missing. The King James 1611 AV Bible reads. Romans 1 verse 31. Without understanding, covenant breakers. Without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. The contemporary English version Bible reads, Romans 1 verse 31. They are stupid, unreliable, and don't have any love or pity for others. Wow! 
I've never seen a comment in the media that called somebody downright stupid. They aren't stupid just because they don't understand. They might be wise. Satan is wise, but he lacks understanding. Yet he isn't stupid. The CEV has 13 words, but the KJV only has 8. The King James 1611 AV Bible reads, Revelation 22 verse 19, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. The Contemporary English Version Bible reads, Revelation 22 verse 19, If you take anything away from these prophecies, God will not let you have part in the life-giving tree and in the holy city described in this book. Let's have a look at this. The CEV has omitted the phrase words of the book. Life-giving tree replaces the book of life. The word written has been replaced by described. It's something I can describe without having to write it down. The CEV is at a complete loss for words. Fair use is an affirmative defense that can be raised in response to claims by a copyright owner that a person is infringing a copyright. Fair use permits a party to use a copyrighted work without the copyright owner's permission for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, or research. These purposes only illustrate what might be considered as fair use and are not examples of what will always be considered as fair use. In fact, there are no bright line rules in determining fair use since it is determined on a case by case basis. But copyright law does establish four factors that must be considered in deciding whether a use constitutes a fair use. These factors are the purpose and character of the use, including whether such use is of a commercial nature or is for nonprofit. Educational purposes. The nature of the copyrighted work. The amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole and the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work. Although one factor or another may weigh more heavily in a fair use determination. Each of the factors must be considered and no one factor alone can determine whether the use falls within the fair use. Exception. However, the factors that are usually the most influential are the first and fourth factors. Factor 1. The purpose and character of the use. The first factor mostly focuses on whether the use is commercial or non-commercial and whether the use is transformative. If a use is commercial it is less likely to be fair use and if it is non-commercial it is more likely to be fair use. Transformative uses are those that add something new with a further purpose or different character and do not substitute for the original use of the work. If the use is transformative it is more likely to be fair use and if it is not transformative it is less likely to be fair use. Factor 2. The nature of the copyrighted work. The second factor considers the nature of the underlying work. Specifically whether it is more creative or more factual. Use of a more creative or imaginative underlying work is less likely to support a claim of fair use, while use of a factual work would be more likely to support a fair use. Claim This factor also looks at the publication status of the copyrighted work. When the copyrighted work is unpublished the use is less likely to be a fair use. Factor 3. The amount used. The third factor considers the amount of the copyrighted work that was used compared to the copyrighted work as a whole, where the amount used is very small in relation to the copyrighted work. This factor will favor a finding of fair use, but where the amount used is not insignificant. This factor will favor the copyright owner. This factor also considers the qualitative amount of the copyrighted work used. If the portion used was the heart of the work, this factor will likely weigh against a finding of fair use even if that portion was otherwise a very small amount. 
Factor 4, the effect of the use on the market. The fourth factor not only considers whether the defendant's activities may harm the current market, but also considers whether the use may cause any harm to potential markets that could be exploited by the copyright owner if the use were to become widespread. If the use harms the copyright owner's current or potential market then it will weigh against fair use. Along with the first factor, this factor is one of the most important in the fair use analysis.